poles on a plane. That's what we're talking about this week. It's probably one of the most common questions that people have about the Camino, whether or not you can carry your trekking poles on a plane. The answer is kind of yes and no, coming right up. So, trekking poles, and can you carry them on a plane? Well, the answer is a little bit complicated, um, but to save you the agony of waiting till the end of the video, I would say generally it's not a good idea. So why is that? You, you'd be thinking, you know, look, they compress down, I can maybe fit them in my pack or along the side of the pack. Uh, here's a couple of different poles that I've used. Um, they both collapse down, they're the sort of twist lock variety. Uh, they both pack down to about 24 inches or 60 centimeters in length. Um, so I could quite easily, if not put them in my pack, um, put them on the side of the pack. Why do I say you probably are not going to be allowed to carry them? And, and look, if you look online for the answer to this, you're going to find some people who say, I've always carried my poles and it's never been a problem. And you're going to have people say, I've never been allowed to carry them. So let me kind of give you a bit of background as to how both of those answers in theory could be right. All right. So there's most times people look at, you know, whether they're able to carry trekking poles or not, and they look at their airline's conditions. Um, and sometimes it may stipulate that, you know, walking sticks and trekking poles and things are allowed into the cabin. That doesn't mean to say you're going to be allowed to carry them. There are really three different sort of organizations uh, that are involved in the security of what you carry onto the aircraft. One, of course, is the airline, and they're going to have their particular policies around the size of luggage that you're allowed to carry, the specifics. We all know, for example, that you can't carry liquids. Is it above 100 mil? What's that in US? Four ounces or something? And we know that we're not allowed to carry knives and dangerous implements. Um, but some airlines may say you can carry a trekking pole. I reckon it's risky to carry them. And I'll tell you why. Let's just wait for the autofocus to kick in. See what's on the end of these trekking poles on there? It's a tungsten tip. Um, you know, potentially that's a weapon. Um, and even though the airline may say it's okay to carry trekking poles, there are two other organizations you've got to get past. Uh, one is airport security. And, you know, I think they ultimately dictate what gets onto the aircraft. Uh, for example, leaving uh, Santiago Airport from Santiago de Compostela, um, the first time I did that, I was carrying my favorite lightweight trekking poles. Uh, and they said no poles on the aircraft. I had to throw them away. Um, and I think Santiago still has that policy. They won't allow trekking poles onto the aircraft. So you've got to check the airline. You've got to check the airports that you're passing through. And then finally, there are other security agencies like in the US. I think you have the TSA, Transport Safety Authority or something. They have an influence on what are allowed onto aircraft or not. So the thing is, you're, you're trying to get past three different organizations, you know, sort of national security, airport security, and the airline. Um, and I wouldn't take the risk, to be honest, because, you know, you, you might have a dearly loved pair of trekking poles and they could get taken off you. Um, so how do you get around it? Well, uh, there are a couple of ways to do that. One that I use, I use a... Um, what do you call it? A mailing tube, a heavy cardboard tube. And I cut it to just a little bit longer than my poles. I can put both poles into the mailing tube. Into that also, I can put, you know, my liquids, uh, if I'm carrying a pocket knife, that kind of thing. And I seal that up and that goes as checked luggage. It does mean I have to carry checked luggage. Uh, so if that's an issue for you, um, you might want to consider option two. And what is option two? I know a lot of people do this. They buy the trekking poles when they get to their destination. So wherever you're starting in France or Spain or wherever else, uh, there are loads and loads of hiking shops. Um, and you can probably, I think you can pick up trekking poles, don't quote me, in, in you know, Saint-Jean or in, in, um, in Spain for sort of 20 euros or something. Uh, you know, the cheaper ones. Personally, I, I like my ones. They're, they're really lightweight and I 
kind of like them. <laughs> I don't want to use something else. So I use the mailing tube. Um, while we're talking about trekking poles, don't forget the rubber tips that go on the end. Really important for two reasons. One, <laughs> it makes them less slippery when you're um, using them on concrete or tarmac. So I know some people say, look, I'll, I'll only use poles going up and down hills. I use them every step of the way. I just find they help with my, my um, the upright posture. Uh, I find they propel me along really well. So whatever surface I'm using my poles. So the rubber tips go on uh, when I'm on hard surfaces like asphalt um, and, uh, and concrete. The other thing is when you put the rubber tips on, you don't drive everybody else nuts <laughs> with a click, 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 click. So uh, just a tip on the uh, on the rubber tips. Oh, there, there's a couple of different ones here. Um, get the hard rubber. Let me see if I can do this with the autofocus. You'll see this one's got a bit of a hole in the end of it. That's because it's a softer rubber uh, and the tungsten tip pushes through the rubber after a while. If, if I'm if I'm using the rubber tips on soft ground, for example, within two or three days, the tungsten will push through. Uh, just a, another tip on, on, the, uh, on the rubber pole tips. I just carry a pair in my pocket and uh, I don't even need to stop to take them on and off. You know, they literally just pop on, pop off. But anyway, this video is about poles on planes. Can you carry them? Some people have, some people say you can. Uh, I'm just saying there is a degree of risk You've really got to get them past three different organizations, the airline, any sort of national security policies, and ultimately the airport security team. So think about it. Um, if you're going to carry them on, I would say be prepared to lose them, have them taken off you. Uh, if not, put them in a tube uh, and check them in or buy some when you get there. So there you go. Poles on a plane. Sounds like a movie title, doesn't it? <laughs> Thanks for watching and see you next time.